As the province finds itself facing down a number of new invasive species, we're being asked to watch out for an old one continuing to grain ground, or rather water, across the province. David Zur explains these water fleas have become known for disrupting food chains and gumming up fishing gear. It's so important to not let any standing water exist in your vessel between water bodies. They are hitchhiker species, so they're able to latch onto your boat or your trailer. The nearly microscopic organisms commonly known as the spiny and fish hook water fleas were introduced to the Great Lakes back in the early 80s, and they're still here. The invasive organisms historically from Eurasia were introduced through the ballast water of traveling ships and since arrived have continued to spread. Now with spring well underway, the Invasive Species Centre is asking outdoor enthusiasts to watch out with marine equipment. They reproduce both sexually and asexually, so that means they could clone themselves as well as reproduce um, through like fertilization. So the main reason that they are such a threat is because of how they would affect the food chain. They eat um, zooplankton and since there could be so many in an area they would outcompete and basically remove this level of the food chain for other species. According to the Lake Simcoe Region Conservation Authority this tiny aquatic pest has actually been on the decline in Lake Simcoe but on the rise a little further north in the Muskoka Lakes impacting both recreational and commercial fisheries. What they really are, are kind of masses of these uh, tiny animals is what they are. The spidey water flea just kind of looks like this kind of small crustacean and it's got this long spike uh, behind it as well, which is really distinctive. What happens is these spiny water fleas, they congregate in these, these schools. Meanwhile, the Ontario Federation of Anglers and Hunters estimates at least 100 inland lakes have now been impacted. Because of the barbs that they have on their tails, uh, which make up the majority of their body length, hence their names, spiny and fishhook water fleas, they'll accumulate on that line. So you'll you'll get this long gelatinous mass. In, in a lot of cases with invasive species, we kind of get to throw up our hands and say, you know, the Canadian winters will take care of it. It's not really the case with this particular uh, pest, is it? No, 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 it's not. They, they can uh, overwinter. They, they'll typically, when they reproduce sexually, they'll typically lay eggs in the fall, and then those, those eggs will, will overwinter. When it comes to the impact that this could have for angling, fishing in Ontario, uh, in the long term, is this something that we consider a nuisance, or is this a grave threat to, to that sector of tourism, to the industry, to people who do this as sport? It is an extreme threat, and I've heard it, you know, kind of defined as the second leading threat to native zooplankton behind acid rain. As for how we can actually help? Big thing, cleaning, draining, drying your vessel. Especially if you're lake hopping. If you have bait left over after fishing, you need to dump it 30 meters away from any shore. On the shore of Lake Ontario, David Zura, City News.